Borky, is would there be a part of him that looks down the roster and just says not good enough? And I know injuries play a, a huge part, but you know, is there a part where you say we left this in the hands of Tristan Jari and, and Casey DeSmith and that just wasn't good enough or the defense wasn't good enough or we were we were too small or we weren't tough enough? Fair question. Uh, very fair question. And you're right. I mean, put yourself behind that bench and you look at the nameplates as you go from left to right. You, you play the cards that you're dealt, right? And you hope you're – you have a good enough relationship and open line of conversation with your general manager that your GM says, what do you need, man? What, what do I need to get you? You know, and if, if that line of conversation is not a two way street and you're not getting the players that you want, then yeah, it, you feel, you feel almost like you've got handcuffs on. Um, but yeah, this, uh, the, the bottom six for this team, man, it's, it's just, it's not even close. It's not. It's just not good enough to compete for a Stanley Cup. And obviously, not to get to the playoffs. Probably the most disappointing part when you talk about the overall team and the skaters uh, were, are the goaltenders. Uh, they have just underachieved, and I, I feel like uh, such a fraud because when the Penguins came out of the gate four zero and one, you know, my job is to analyze. And when I come on shows like yours, Nikki and, and Justin. You, you want some expert analysis, right? And I went on about, I think J- Tristan Jari and Casey Smith are two of the best uh, two goalies in a great tandem and all this. And there was just an injury and then a bad goal. And it just seemed to be one thing after another thing where you, you just feel like you can't trust these guys. And I felt that was a strength for the Penguins and it ended, ended up being more of a weakness. So, you know, first off, we're all, you know, you're forgiven on that. You know, that is a, it was a very unpredictable turn for Pittsburgh that obviously had a large impact on their season. There's, but there's been, listen, there's been a lot of jobs lost over, particularly coaching jobs lost over goaltenders who didn't perform well. What changes do you think are coming then for Pittsburgh this off season? There's no way they just run it back next season with the same group and say, try again. You know, just, just before you add to that, Borky, to Justin's point, this is the Fenway group that are now the owners. Uh, uh, when you talk about Justin's uh, question and then answer it, uh, uh, give us a feel of the Fenway group and where they fit in all of this and how much they've really paid attention and who are they really? Well, that's something I'm hearing a lot from Penguin fans. Is they don't know. They don't know who they are um, because there really hasn't been a face to the organization and you know, you guys have been to Pittsburgh enough times to know that we're a big city, but we're a small city, you know, and we're just blue collar, man. And, and we like relationships and we consider our athletes and, and the owners of our sports teams family. I mean, you look at the Rooney family with the, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, there's a, there's a bond and a connection there that that's always going to be there. And, you know, even though Ron Burkle, uh, who was, you know, the principal owner with Mario Lemieux before the Fenway group, wasn't really seen much. Mario was. And so he took the place of Ron. Everybody kind of understood that Ron was more the money guy and, and Mario was more the hockey guy. And it works for everybody because we still had the big boy there. And now with the Fenway group, a lot of people are like, who are they? We don't, we don't know who owns the Penguins. Uh, maybe that will change now that, uh, you know, the, you know what's going to hit the fan here, I think, a little bit. But kind of to – to not ramble on here and get to your question, Justin, uh, the number one thing for me is they need more size. They move, yeah. need more jam. They need more grit. I'll be honest with you. That's the biggest, the hardest thing for me to watch all year, guys, is to watch and Chris Letang and even Evgeny Malkin. Guys just running the snot out of them. And you look around and you're like, well, somebody – Will somebody please do something? And I know they're looking over their shoulders, and nobody, Nikki, nobody does a thing. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like it before. And so what do those guys do? They're not shrinking violets. They go and stick up for themselves. You know, and you know as well as I do. And I'm, Justin, you understand this, and especially Nikki, who played that role, right? If you saw Mark Messier get drilled from behind and you're on the ice, for the love of all the tolling. You didn't care if you got punched in the face 15 times. You went and stuck up for that guy because, number one, 
your teammates respected you, but just as much the opponent respected you for doing it because it's the right thing to do. And I was taught as a peewee, and I remember the coach. His name was Beaver Robinson, and he was a spitter. He's a yeller and a spitter. (laughs) (laughs) Right? He grabbed me by the jersey, and all that spit flying in my face. And he's like, he's like, nobody, nobody ever touches your captain, and nobody touches your goalie. And I'll never, I never forgot that. And I got punched in the face a lot, sticking up for my captain and my goalie. And I just don't see it on the Pittsburgh Penguins team. So, Borky, where's, where's Sid in all of this to say this? You know Sid, though. Sid, Sid doesn't color outside the lines. You know, Sid, uh, Sid uh, you know, he stays with, on his lane because, you know, too many people give him heat if he, go, if he, if he says what's really on his heart. Uh, that's just the reality of, of being a star in a sport, that if you really voice your opinion, there's so much that comes back. You're like, why did I bother? I'll just give them what they want to hear.